step by step and side by side. How to record a song using GarageBand and Pro Tools. Lesson three, laying down the piano track. In this lesson, you will see an overview of the completed song in both Pro Tools and GarageBand, and you will learn how to record the piano track and begin to edit it. Here is an example of a completed song. The tracks that you set up in Lesson 2 are now filled with audio and MIDI data. Let's listen. Function confirm for myself paralyzed by fear. I lie here silently. Will someone rescue me? Is there anybody near to open up your eyes and see the light? It shines above you like the stars. with breath just like the day that you were born the day your mommy gave you life breathe it in Now that you have an idea of what the song sounds like, let's look at the piano track. To solo the track, click on the headphones button, then click on play. To look at this MIDI piano track in more detail, we double click on one of the track sections. And underneath in the editor, we see that the MIDI track opens up in much more detail. We can see the individual notes that have been pressed, we can also see how long they last for and the heaviness or velocity with which they were pressed. You might wish to use the zoom function to see more or less of the MIDI data. The zoom button is at the top right hand side of the editor window. Let's start to record the piano track. Check your metronome and count in buttons are on. Check the speed, press record and off we go. Grab the track and move it to the start of the piece. Now listen to what you have made. Make sure you can see the editor by double clicking the green track. I notice that the first note does not play, so I need to fix that up. The chord doesn't play because it was slightly before the beat, so I'm going to highlight each of the notes of the chord and move them so that they are on the beat. Listen again. And now it's fixed. Currently we are viewing the MIDI data as lines on a grid. This is known as piano roll. If I click on the score button I can view the MIDI data as notation. For editing purposes however piano roll is much more useful. When I listen the first time I notice that my playing was quite detached because I'm not using a pedal. I would like the effect of using a pedal. So what I'm doing here is elongating each chord that I've played so that it almost touches the next one. This will make the chords move more smoothly from one to the other, giving the impression that the pedal is being used. To save time, I can highlight multiple chords and drag them all at the same time. Now let's listen. Now 
I'm going to have a look at the velocity of each bass note that I played. As I click on each note, the velocity value changes depending on the intensity at which I hit the note in the first place. I'm going to increase the velocity of the first note by dragging the velocity slider to the right. I'm doing this because it's the first beat of the bar and also because it has some harmonic significance. Clicking on the loop button will save you having to press play and stop each time you want to listen. If you listen carefully, you will notice that not every single note is played exactly on the beat. Sometimes you might want to use the quantize function. The quantize function allows you to place notes exactly on the beat. I'm going to quantize to a quarter note because most of my notes are crotchets. As I do that, you may have noticed that each note moves to exactly the right spot on the grid. Some notes have moved where I didn't want them to, so I'll manually change that. Now when you listen, you may notice that the playing is much more robotic and much more precise. If you put the metronome on, you will see exactly how precise it is. I actually don't want my piece to sound so robotic, so I'm going to undo those last two functions. The shortcut for undo is Command plus Z on your keyboard. If you look carefully at the beginnings of each note, you will notice that I have been fairly accurate. Sometimes I'm a little before the beat, sometimes I'm a little after. But after all, that is the effect I'm looking for. To copy and paste, I click on the track section that I want to copy, press Command C on my keyboard, place the cursor where I want to copy, and then press Command plus V. To join these two pieces of track together, I highlight both of them and then I visit the edit menu and choose join regions. I can also use the shortcut key command plus J. Now I'm going to add an arrangement track which will help me to keep organised. I go to track and show arrangement track. Click on the plus sign and in the drop down menu choose the correct label. Drag the end of the grey section to where you want it. Click on the plus sign to repeat the whole process again. Now that you have the basic skills you need to record and edit the piano track in GarageBand, let's show you how we do this whole process in Pro Tools. Here is the same song that you have just been looking at, but this time it has been created using Pro Tools. I'm going to solo the piano track by clicking on the S button. This will allow me to hear the piano track on its own. Double clicking a section of the piano track will open the MIDI editor. Click on the plus and minus buttons at the bottom right hand corner of the MIDI editor to see the data in more detail. I'm going to add a click track first. I visit the track menu Go Create Click Track. This acts like the metronome did in GarageBand and keeps us in time.
To hear the click track, press play. If the tempo of the click track is incorrect for your piece, then you will need to change this. You can check it here on the transport bar and also in one of the rulers at the top. If we double click, we have the option to change the beats per minute. First, we click on the record enable button on the piano track. Then we double check our instrument is working. If you want a two bar count in, you need to make sure that the count off button is highlighted with green and that it says two bars. Click on the red record button. Then when you are ready, click on the play button. Recording will begin after two bars count in. Using the trim tool, I'm going to make this section exactly four bars long. I'm going to magnify the view so I can see clearly what I'm doing. To do this accurately, I have my settings set on grid. Using the grabber tool, I'm now going to double click and edit this part in the MIDI editor. I'm using the plus and minus buttons to magnify the view. Using the grabber tool within the MIDI editor, I'm going to highlight the first two chords and then using the trim tool, I'm going to extend those chords just like I did in GarageBand. I'm going to repeat this process until all the chords have been extended. Now press play and listen to what this sounds like. You might have noticed that it's not exactly in time, so now I'm going to show you how to quantize the first bar. Using the grabber tool you highlight the first bar. In the event menu you choose event operations and quantize. This brings up the Quantize dialog box. Because my beats are crotchet beats, I'm going to quantize to one quarter note. Now the first bar is exactly in time. But I don't actually want that, so I'm going to undo that function. Press Command and Z to undo. If you look closely, you will see that some of my notes are before the beat and some are after. Now I'm going to change the velocity of some of my notes. Clicking on the first bass note, I can see that the velocity is measured by means of a graph. I'm going to increase the velocity and you will notice that the note changes from a light bluey colour to a much darker colour. Similarly, I can decrease the velocity in the same way. The note changes to a very pale blue. It is now so quiet that it cannot be heard. Now let's organise our track markers. Go to View, Rulers, Markers. This brings up the marker ruler where you can label the different parts of your song. Click the plus sign to create a new marker and label it appropriately. I'm going to call this Introduction. Place your cursor where you want the next marker to appear. Click the plus button and label this marker verse 1. To copy and paste tracks, make sure the track that you want to copy from is highlighted. Click on the track itself with the grabber tool. Via the edit menu, click on copy or press command C on your keyboard. Put your cursor where you want to copy. Go to the edit menu and do command V or paste and your track's been copied. In Pro Tools, you can also duplicate tracks. Highlight the track, go to the Edit menu, choose Duplicate or Command D. Let's look at what's the same and what's different between these two pieces of software. Pro Tools offers you the choice of keeping in time by using a click track, 
whereas GarageBand uses a metronome. Pro Tools has complex MIDI editing tools that consist of the grabber, the trim tool and the selector tool. GarageBand offers you the same MIDI editing functions but not as separate tools. Both programs offer you a count in function. Pro Tools allows you to change the type of sounds that you have for the count in. GarageBand simply has a default sound. Both programs allow you to quantize. Only Pro Tools has record enable. GarageBand does not. Pro Tools uses different colors for each different track. GarageBand uses different colors too, but these different colors are to show audio and MIDI tracks. Both Pro Tools and GarageBand have solo and mute buttons. Pro Tools uses letters S for solo and M for mute, whereas GarageBand uses pictures. You can label the different parts of your song in both these programs. GarageBand calls it an arrangement track and Pro Tools calls it a marker track. That is the end of lesson three. In lesson four, you will learn how to record and edit an audio track by recording the guitar track. Thank you.